Good morning. The, the songs for this morning's Mass, our entrance hymn, is number 513, 513. O oh Lord, I am not worthy, 513. And our recessional hymn is number 597, 597. I want to walk as a child of the light, 597. Thank you. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we join together and continue our Lenten journey, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Guard your church, we pray, O Lord in your unceasing mercy. And since without you mortal, mortal humanity is sure to fall, may we be kept by your constant helps from all harm and directed to all that brings salvation. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds be from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wronged. Hear the orphan's plea, defend the widow. Come now, let us set things right, says the Lord. Though your sins be like scarlet, they may become white as snow. Though they may be crimson red, they may become white as wool. If you are willing and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land, but if you refuse and resist, the sword shall consume you, 
for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Cast away from you all the crimes you have committed, says the Lord and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens hard to carry and lay them on people's shoulders and they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation rabbi. As for you, do not be called rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father, for you have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master, you have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a reason that they call pride the primordial sin. And why is that? I almost want to ask the question, but it's 8 a.m. and I'm not going to do that to you. They call it the primordial sin because if we go back to the beginning, the first sin that was committed by us was to take this knowledge of good and evil onto ourselves to basically say, I'm going to be the master of how this goes. I'm going to take control, and I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to do it all on my own strength. So within that pride, we get self-reliance. 
and you know all of these other things and even self-righteousness in the sense that we can't you know we start to kind of get a little bit full of ourselves to the point as we get to the gospel today Jesus calls it out and says hold the phone guys yeah like listen they got it right here because they sit on the chair of Moses the Pharisees again are calling you to God's law and this is a good thing but don't you follow what they're doing because of the fact the preaching and the practice were at odds and for all of us this is a danger because that self-reliance that self-pride that almost kind of the point where we start to get like to the uh, up and uh, say you know hey I'm at daily mass I'm doing pretty good I'm wicked holy <laughs> any of you think that no. any of you start to think you're you know you think you're the high and mighty greatest thing that's in sliced bread no. I hope not but have you brought that question to prayer <laughs> Okay, one person, there we go. <laughs> one person has said it. Bring it to prayer. Because remember, we have these things called blind spots. And we are not immune to convincing ourselves we're doing really good when we, and where there comes to a factor, it's like we're not doing as good as we think we are. Because often we give ourselves good a lot of credit for good intentions you know, we have this capacity for self-deception, and we can fall into the trap where we start to think we're up here and we're really, like, down here. Case in point, if you've ever looked kind of at these stages and indicators of where you are in the spiritual life, kind of according to these mansions of St. Teresa of Avila, you're interested in it, it's in two places. It's in a book called Navigating the Interior Life. It's also in a book called The Devil in the Castle. What the latter is about St. Teresa's mansions and that growth in spiritual life. You want to be humbled in a hurry? Go look at that. Because it'll be very, very apparent that as we start to look at like where these markers are supposed to be, we're going to go, whew, okay. I am not exactly where I'd like to be or think I am. And because of that, what happens? Do we get discouraged? Do we get depressed? Do we beat ourselves up? Well, that's what old screw tape down below would love, is to start to listen to his voice as opposed to the voice of the Lord, who is rather not condemning us, but beckoning us to get out of the boat and start to do the impossible, not through our power, but through humble recognition we can't do it. The entirety of the spiritual life, dear friends, and the call forward into relationship with God comes down to the fact that we can't do it by ourselves. We can't go to the depths that we want to go to on our own. And if we don't go to that point of opening our heart to the Lord and basically say, I need to push away, Lord, from self-reliance and self-pride and thinking I can do it all by myself, then we're always going to be stuck, maybe at the tippity top of the purgative way, but we'll never go to the greater depths of communion with God, which is the whole reason we're here. Why, why else be here at 8 a.m. On, on a Tuesday morning? Why else come to Mass at all? There we go. Lizzie, say, Lizzie backed me up. She's like, yeah, well said, Father. There we go. We, we're supposed to be in do diving into communion with God, and it's supposed to be the thing, not a feature, not like, you know, a little side course, but the main event, the main course of the meal, the whole reason we are here. And to the degree that we allow our hearts to be converted, and that ongoing conversion takes us deeper into that realm of relationship with God, friends, do you realize what can happen for us? Do you realize that the saints pointed out to us that there is a communion that we could start to tap into with God that is nothing short of astonishing in the here and now? That it's not just reserved for the end? The greatest tragedy is that we often pursue all of the smaller things. 
all of the little distractions, all of these little things that don't really matter in the grand scheme. The Pharisees fall into it in that they start to seek honor in all these places. Or they start to seek, like, you know, prestige in all these places. This is not it. Whether it's honor, whether it's power, whether it's wealth, whether it's pleasure, and all their subderivatives, they are never going to be enough. Because this part of you longs for infinity. A love that does not end and expands beyond our wildest imaginations. That's what it longs for. How else do we explain when we finally achieve something we've wanted for eons and ages, and we actually get it, that all of a sudden we go, after a few months, well, now what? Well, now what? What is it we truly want? We want the fullness of this. And John of the Cross puts it plainly. He says, the only way you're going to fill the infinite cavern of your heart is by going to the infinite himself. God, who is love, and between those three members of the Holy Trinity is an eternal exchange of love that has been so important to God that he wrote it into our very creation in our humanity. We have to stop going for the low-hanging fruit and the lowest common denominator and just going, well, let me just you know, put the Band-Aid on this thing. No. And don't shove down that desire you have for infinity either and sit there and do what we, like, what we could call a Christianity, white-knuckling it for the kingdom. That's not helping either. Because that's the great divide we have in our culture right now between Christianity and the world. They think we're taking that hunger of the heart to just shove down and white knuckle it for the kingdom. And so they go to the things of the world and start to try to extract that infinity out of it. All of us are designed rather to go to the same spot to find the fullness that we desire. And that is communion with God. In and through the means he has given us for just that, through prayer and the sacraments, that self-giving and that self-denial, and at the core of all of that, our continued deepening yes to him. So I'm just going to put it out there, and I ask you this question. What do you really want? What is it you truly desire? Thank you, Tammy. Love. A lot of audience participation today. I'm loving it. We really want love. Let's seek it in the source of love, which is God himself, who is longing to encounter you personally. Lifting our hearts before the Lord, let us bring our prayers before him this day. That we may not fall asleep, slipping into patterns of neglect, but remain vigilant in following Christ's call to love, we pray to the Lord. Lord that businesses and employers will ensure that their words of, of equity and support are matched by their practices, we pray to the Lord. 
those who suffer at the hands of oppressors may be rescued, we pray to the Lord. Lord that those who have purposely hurt others in their lives be filled with the desire to make amends and ask for mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the suffering and sick among us who feel humbled in their trials be exalted by your healing power, we pray to the Lord. That those who have died never see sorrow and darkness again, but only the light of your glory, we pray to the Lord. The Lord As we lift up Francis B. Catinus in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, invigorate our hearts with every grace and spiritual blessing. Help us to lay down those things in this season of Lent, Lord, that are keeping us from giving the full gift of our hearts to you, that we may enter into a more ever-deepening, abiding communion with you and draw close to you forever. And we ask this. Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, on the sacrificial gifts we offer you, and by this holy exchange, undo the bonds of our sins through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor. So help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels 
as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Soft to one another, a sign of peace. On your stay, we told this peck a top wound. Is there a Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. I will recount all your wonders. I will rejoice in you and be glad and sing psalms to your name, O Most High. We now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
us pray. May the refreshment of this sacred table, O Lord, we pray, bring us an increase in devoutness of life and the constant help of your work of conciliation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Graciously hear the cries of your faithful, O Lord, and relieve the weariness of their souls, that, having received your forgiveness, they may ever rejoice in your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. Have a great day, everyone.